All right, we are here at MAGFest 12 with the legendary Tommy Tallarico right in front of the Tron hey, machine. <laughs> oh, that's me. Yeah, he's a legend right here. So, Tommy, yeah. how, how's your experience been so far here at MAGFest this year? Unfreaking believable. I mean, uh, this is a man. Pan around with the camera. Pan around. Yeah, take a look at this. You got. What do you think? I don't. No words can describe this. This is all tens of thousands of gamers here because they love video game music. I'm in heaven! Now, Tommy, when you started in 1990, did you ever dream that there would be an event like this about video games and video game music? Yes, but it was being held in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> the Tallarico Con, year one. Exactly, in my mind. It was right. it was being held at my house. So you had a panel on uh, Video Games Live talking about the history of it. You also had a panel today, all the guest composers. Later on today, you have a panel on the 8 and 16-bit video game music. You want to talk a little bit about that? No. <laughs> all right, you heard it here first, folks. I uh, know yeah, we're, we're uh, going to be, you know, talking about uh, the constraints and challenges of working in with in the 8-bit generation with, you know, the uh, the NES and the Game Boy, and then in the 16-bit generation, the Super Nintendo and Genesis. That back then, it was it was easier to write the music, but harder to put it in the machine. So you spent more time with the technology end of things than actually writing the music. So, you know, going some of the stuff is just crazy stories, uh, the difficulties and challenges of, of doing that, so. That's so awesome. Well, one thing I find so interesting is, obviously being a veteran video game composer, people recognizing your name for years, now being so associated with Video Games Live, people recognizing your face um, <laughs> all the time. What's it like now to almost be this rock god of the video game music world? People always come to, how does that feel? Uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, I'm very flattered by, by your words. I, I don't see it like that, but, uh, but I appreciate it. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's very cool. You know, uh, as, yeah, as, as composers in general, I mean, even like Danny Elfman's and the John Williams, I mean, a lot of people know the names, but they might not, they walk past them on the street, might not even know that that was just Danny Elfman that passed. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think... Uh, I think deep inside, you know, a lot of reasons that composers do what they do is because they want to, they want others to hear their work, you Absolutely. know? And so to be recognized for that, either physically or on Facebook or YouTube or email or whatever, I think it's a, it's a great honor, I know, for me. And I get the lucky... A job of taking this amazing music that composers from all over the world create and I can tour it all over the world and get to meet thousands of people a night who appreciate video games as much as I do so it's it's just a, such a huge honor for me. So for people that didn't uh, get the opportunity to attend MAGFest and attend your panel on Video Games Live, do you want to give a quick update about the Kickstarter, the album, kind of the progress of that? Yeah, for sure and, and I, actually I think the uh, for the people who missed the panel, screw it attack uh, filmed it and it's going to be up on their website so awesome yeah. definitely check that out everybody but yeah the uh, the Kickstarter project uh, was a huge success in fact from here tomorrow or Monday we're leaving to go to Prague uh, Czech Republic to start recording it or we've started recording it but we're going to be recording the uh, symphony version of it uh, the symphony parts and then yeah for the whole month of January I'm just going to be mixing and mastering and recording and it's going to be on time February 18th, and it, and we're gonna have stuff like um, we're doing, you know, the Tetris Opera and Skyrim and Journey and Beyond Good and Evil and Shadow of the Colossus. I mean, it's gonna be unbelievable. Zelda and Pokemon. Now, are a lot of the guest composers that are featured on the tour gonna be featured on this album as well? Absolutely. We got Akira Yamaoka because we're doing Silent Hill. He's playing guitar on some of the stuff. Uh, Noriko Habino, the Metal Gear Solid composer, he's a great saxophone player, he's going to be on it. Laura Flute Link in Travia, uh, the amazing uh, flautist and, and opera singer, is on it. Uh, vocalist Jillian Aversa, who worked on Halo and God of War, 
uh, the games uh, right. is going to be you know singing on this as well. Um, so many, so many different people. BT, the amazing mixer, BT. We're doing a Chrono Cross Scars of Time remix. Oh my God. With BT. It's going to be It's awesome. going to be epic. You guys should be looking forward to that. Oh, that's so that's so great. So, Prague, you say you're flying to Prague to record the orchestra there. What was it about? Was it a financial? Did it work in the schedule? Why did you go with the Prague Orchestra? Well, the Prague Orchestra is one of the most recorded orchestras in the world for film and television. And they are amazing. I mean, you go on YouTube and put in Prague Orchestra and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, it is cheaper over there as well. That doesn't hurt. Which, well, but the great thing about that is because we want to record so much stuff, going over there, not only are we getting the top, you know, top musicians, some of the top musicians in the world, but also we get a lot more studio time with them. Right. So what that's going to enable us to do is, once we record the whole thing with like the or full orchestra, then we can go back and say, you know what? Just the violins play. Right. Just the brass play. And what that does, that enables us to do layering in the mixing and also to control the mix more if we wanted to like, oh, you know what? I want the brass to really punch through right there for that section. I can go back and say, you know what? I have another version with just the horns. Let me layer that in and pump it up a little bit. You know? One thing that's so nice is I know that Every video game touring show has to play to a click track, and I'm assuming this whole album will be to a click track. Does that make it easier when you have to record it much, all over the world? In different much, parts? much easier. So, like Akira is doing his guitar parts in Tokyo. I got guys doing stuff in New York City. I got yeah. percussionists in Hollywood. Uh, you so know, great. all over the place. So yeah, absolutely. That that's the key to making it work. That's so awesome. So Tommy, do you have anything else that you're looking forward to seeing or experiencing at your time here at Makefest before you head out on Monday? Um, yeah, you know, just just the uh, I, I just love meeting the people. You know, all these tens of thousands of people here are passionate about video game music. So the thing that I get most excited about when I come here is talking to people who who love the same kind of stuff. Uh, I do. And it's know? so rare because in our day-to-day -day lives, it's rare for us to find someone that has the level of passion of video game music. Yeah. So it's so cool to come to a place where everyone right. shares that passion. And, and that's what we do with Video Games Live as well. It's really a celebration of, of the whole video game industry. And yeah, we see that around the world in every show we do. Last question to have for you, Tommy. We're based in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Yeah. When are you guys coming to Minneapolis? I know, right? Well, the, the Minneapolis uh, Orchestra yeah. has been having some financial difficulties. Yes, they have. And there's, uh, and there, and it's, you know, due to like the striking of the union and there's a lot of things kind of going on that they're trying to get through. And uh, as soon as that, as soon as that's back on track, we'll be back. So hopefully this year or next year. Awesome. That's great you know? news. Well, we can't wait to check out Video Games Live. We've never been, but we're incredibly excited for it. And, and, and look at this beautiful Tron machine. I gotta, I gotta point it out. This is Discs of Tron. The original Tron it's right there, and, and no one has been able to defeat me in this game. Uh, and this of Tron, I, I'm even, can I share something with you? Go ahead. I'm wearing Tron boxer shorts today. That's how hardcore, right? Wow. I mean, I'm officially on the grid, if you know what I mean. So if anyone wants to challenge him, now that now is the time. And well, just, thanks. <laughs> well, I, and I'd just like to say, this guy talks way too much. I don't. <laughs> You know, you got to yeah. say something, man. I apologize. Can I ask you one last question? No. Okay, so Anyways, anyway. Anyways, what we were saying about Tron. Yeah, no, no. No, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, my question. You hold the microphone. Okay, yes. my question is that, um, well, w recently we've been getting a lot of sort of retro reboots and remakes, such as like DuckTales. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel like the time will eventually come Earthworm we'll get, Jim. yeah, an Earthworm Jim, and we hope they ask you to do the music. Is there anything already in the works for that? Yeah, I mean, the, the original team has got together, we've done design documents, we've, we've made plans to do it, and Interplay won't give us the rights to do it. Oh. So, so we're waiting, because we, we think it would be awesome, because the original team wants to do it. Right. We thought it would be awesome if we did it, like, through Kickstarter or something. That's a fantastic right. idea. But, but we won't get the right, so we're, we're, we'll work. Eventually, it's going to happen, I think. I always wonder, as far as, that's such a common story of not getting the rights. Why do you think that is that a company like Interplay wouldn't be interested in, in having that game, giving you guys the rights? Simple word. Greed. <laughs>
Well, thanks a lot, Tommy. We really appreciate you doing this interview for us. Awesome, man. Okay. Enjoy the rest of Bakefest. Hell yeah.